Joe Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you coming at you from my backyard garden. And this is an episode many of you guys I know have been waiting for actually. Uh, this is basically the AquaJet update video. So if you uh, saw it before, I had an install of the revolutionary new AquaJet system which is a subsurface, high pressure, uh, short cycle time irrigation system to water all my raised beds and I'll put links down below there's two videos first is the install video then the second is the FAQ video with the owner of intelligent irrigation LLC Rob to answer a lot of questions about the aquajet and you know I installed that before this season started we're you know rambling on through the summer season as you guys can see my growth is phenomenal this is probably some of the best growth I've ever had here in Las Vegas compared to like the other side of my yard growing in standard circular raised beds with drip irrigation it's insane like some of my pepper plants like nearly six feet tall now now is that all because the aquajet kicks ass and rules the whole world I wouldn't say that I would definitely say that because of the aquajet and the soil mixture that you know you guys could check out my past episodes on what exactly I'm using for soil because I use some very specific ingredients it's very important to get the results you know, if you want to get the results I'm getting, you got to do what I'm doing. You got to use the exact soil mixture or very close to it, the exact similar nutrients, you know, compost teas, the rock dust, the worm gold plus worm castings. And actually in this soil mix, it's, it's probably the best soil mix in Las Vegas. Anyways, um, but I think part of the reason why my garden's done so well this summertime is also the AquaJet system because it doesn't just top water and drip down. I mean, it sprays at high pressure. The water capillates out to where it needs to be. And more importantly, in my opinion, it aerates the soil. And I have seen studies that, that show, you know, aerating the soil helps with you know, growth of the plants and the root growth and all this stuff. And I've definitely noticed it because I think even if I had the soil and I had drip irrigation, I honestly believe I would not have gotten these results because frankly, I've seen people use a similar soil mix and I've never seen, you know, here in Las Vegas, pepper plants as tall as I'm growing. And actually half the day they're in shade, like I'm in shade right now, they're in shade. So, I mean, these things are phenomenal. I got tons of peppers to harvest. I don't know if you guys could see. Three beds of peppers. And, you know, I want to say that the AquaJet has worked fairly well up till this point. Although, you know, I'm not going to blow smoke up your butts and say it's the best thing ever. I did definitely have some challenges with the AquaJet and you know that's why we're gonna go back in time <laughs> and uh, show you, share with you guys you know right after I the AquaJet was installed and how it worked what happened and actually why I thought it was a piece of junk at some point and how I got that resolved and you know coming back to now and how everything is really doing great so I guess without further ado let's go back in time to see uh, you know a little bit after about a, a couple weeks to a month after I installed the AquaJet and some of the challenges that I was having. I definitely think this AquaJet is working in the places that it's working and for some reason it's not working in some places for I don't exactly know why. You know it's it's tough to say that any of the challenges that you'll see you're seeing in this video is caused from the irrigation system it might be some other reason you know but once the plants got established I think that's the main thing once they got established and sent it out their roots right Roots on plants are like me in a bar, right? I'm a heat seeker, heat seeking the hottest girls. Well, the roots of the plants are not seeking the hottest chicks. They're seeking the water. So once they get established and they recover from their transplant shock, you know, their roots are heat seeking missiles for the water. And then once they find it, then they're actually nice and happy and the stuff really works. So as you guys can see, we got some tomatoes here, had some uh, volunteers that came up in my greenhouse. And initially was a transplant shock, but now that it's come back, it's doing quite good. It's recovering. Even got a few little uh, cherries on there, almost ready to harvest. The one next door, not so lucky. Um, it didn't make it, actually. It's all right. Even got some volunteers coming up here. I think these are some kind of melons, actually, that just uh, volunteered and some uh, weeds that are coming up. So, you know, yes, in certain cases, you know, seeds can germinate with the aqua jet. Over in this side of the bed, you guys can see everything's doing really well. We got nice green growth up to a certain point. And then over here, it looks like some of these guys are just still a bit smaller for some reason. I'm not sure if that's the sun or the water. 
And then I had a bunch of plants back here. I had six new Grande Rio Verde Tomatillos, and I have only one living uh, left, which made it. Uh, they were actually planted out, and they were in a small six pack. So guess what? Small six pack. The roots aren't quite developed yet, and it's going to be harder for the plant to adjust and then send its roots out to find the water if it's not right there. I think that's one of the things I've learned about the AquaJet is you want to get the largest plants and transplant them in when they're at the largest, when they have the most root mass so that those roots could, you know, grow out and find the, and seek the water. Next, we're going to go ahead and show this racetrack bed. Once again, we got the racetrack in this. That's a dual, you know, uh, lines going down each side. I'm doing an experiment with the Grow It Now plant protectors to see if uh, things in the protectors, even though it's no, no danger of frost, if it will even help the growth even more by, you know, enclosing it and keeping it even warmer than the normal weather, which has actually been quite nice lately. The good news is these were transplanted from four packs of uh, Bonnie plants, like $1.87 for a four pack, and all these were transplanted in, and they all made it. They had some initial transplant shock, and this whole bed's doing good, except maybe this guy in the end. It looks like the soil's staying a little bit dry sometimes. He's got a little bit of a browning in the leaves, but he's still alive nonetheless. So, yes, I can definitely say the racetrack system working quite well in my raised bed. Let's take a look at some other areas and how it's growing with the AquaJet. All right, so this next bed, not doing so good, right? This is the update with this raised bed that has the single AquaJet running down the middle. I do not advise or recommend the single AquaJet running down the middle. You know, I, I can't even recommend it actually. I planted a bunch of plants in here and these guys weren't even like a four pack or a six pack. They're in a minimum like four and a half inch circular Bonnie round container. And uh, I planted on all those guys in here and uh, you know, a bunch of my plants, like 10 of them didn't make it. Some other ones are actually having some challenges. Um, you know, they all had some transplant shock, but now that most of them are making it, they're doing quite good. I might have some, uh, some bug issues here that's eating my stuff. But, uh, nonetheless, you know, this shows me that the, this AquaJet, uh, with a single line is just not reaching out the claimed two feet that it should. I definitely believe it could reach out one foot, because with the racetrack, it only has to go like a, a foot or so. But two feet in the soil that I have is definitely pushing it. You know, on each end row, like this side, we had two plants that are still alive, but yet very stressed. And then the other line, we have like four plants that are still alive and they're very stressed. Now, when you stress out your plants too much, right, that hurts your production. So I'm concerned that I may not get too much fruit or production out of these guys on the ends. I'm actually considering at this point um, putting in a dual racetrack AquaJet system if it's not going to disturb my plants too much, actually because this just ain't cool and it's not even that warm yet. You know, later in the season when it gets really warm, it's definitely not gonna be good. All right, so the next update is with a four foot by 16 foot bed here. As you guys can see, I planted out in peppers. This has been planted out for about a week. For the first couple days, I supp supplemental watered up on the top to, you know, help get them established. They had some transplant shock that they went through, yellowing a little bit. I hit them with some uh, sea fertilizer on the top some foiler feed and some root drench and now they're snapping out of it and uh, now they're greening up doing quite well i think uh you know the ends having a little bit of a challenge on some of the plants but i'm keeping my eye on them and watering them as needed so hopefully they'll get established and find their own water and hopefully soon they'll all thrive so last i want to give you the update on the like literally one foot bed by like 40 foot bed i mean this is the bed that i seriously thought the aqua jet would perform really well and i mean it's only got to spray out one foot yet this is the bed that i had the most challenge with i don't know if this is because this is in like full direct sun and it's not getting watered enough or there's some challenges with the system because there's a few things happening number one I'm getting over water. So if you look here on the side of the bed here, you'll see basically we have a water marks coming out of my bricks here. And then actually you can see a hole underneath here where there's excess water running down into this low part uh, in my yard. And you can see here just really wet in the irrigation control box. So that means that this area for some reason is actually getting too much water and it's running away. The plants in this area seem to be doing fairly well. 
But if we uh, continue down further, you know, uh, I lost a lot of plants here, and these plants are quite stunted, so they're not doing too well. Um, you know, one of the reasons for this might be because the area that you saw that's growing well is in the shade, and this is in full sun. These are more corns that didn't quite make it. Of course, some random ones are making it. Over here is my whole patch of cucumbers. You know, I planted Armenian cucumbers, lemon cucumbers, more lemon cucumbers, man, even more Armenian cucumbers, <laughs> more Armenian cucumbers. All these guys did not make it because I had faith in the AquaJet. And I'm not exactly sure why this happened, you know. I'm gonna try again, plant some more cucumbers and see if I can get them to go. I use the same soil in all the beds, so I don't think that's the issue. I, I have no re really reason why this is not working properly. But if I go down here, <clears throat> you can see we do have some cucumbers that did take and they did make it. So that's interesting why they worked here, but they didn't work just a few feet to the other side. Next here we got some patio tomatoes and all my tomato plants, all my patio tomatoes that I planted made it except for two, which are right here, which shriveled up and didn't quite make it. You know, I think this is quite acceptable for a new irrigation system. I mean, when you're like at the cutting edge of technology, there's always some challenges. I mean, Bill Gates releases like his operating system when there's still problems and you guys are still getting viruses on your Windows system. That's why I went Mac and I might not go back. All right, so I have an inquisitive mind and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm successful in gardening. I want you guys to have an inquisitive mind too. So I started like clearing this section out and uh, <clears throat> I've dug down here to see what's going on and down here it's definitely wet. But the problem is I had the AquaJet guys come in and install this system for me and I double checked them like three times. I'm like, okay, you guys, installed it properly right they're like yeah we installed it properly i'm like if it messes up i'm showing it so that's why you guys are seeing this and so they installed it and uh <clears throat> and why this didn't work specifically is uh, two reasons number one i believe this is uh buried too deeply number one basically it's uh actually about seven inches six to seven inches down off the top of the bed it's only supposed to be four inches, so they screwed up by three inches. This caused me to lose, you know, a number of my plants. Issue number one. Issue number two is that this is an area that gets full sun. Some of the other areas, like later on down there and a little bit earlier, you know, uh, don't get as much sun. So that's when the plants really need it, and the water just cannot capillate up six inches. It might be able to go up four inches, but with six inches, it was just too much to ask for with you know younger baby transplants that mostly came out of six packs a uh, few came out of the uh, you know four and a half inch pots and the other thing that was happening here is that the aqua jet should be in installed parallel right so that the spray comes right out what happened is down there and this is me a b-i-t-c-h to correct the aqua jet's actually slanted down so now the water jet even worse is kind of like going down instead of going straight out this is another huge issue now that I'm actually not quite sure how I'm going to correct it, you know, once it's installed and in there and was done improperly. So no matter what, if you get the AquaJet, take your time to do it right. Make sure your, all your sprays are coming out properly and only bury it to four inches. Do not bury it any deeper. Otherwise, you're going to lose some crops like I did and maybe not be so happy. So I've been playing around here and actually this is a fairly easy challenge to correct. The first thing I want to show you guys is a patio tomato that didn't make it. The one on either side made it, but this one didn't. And, uh, you know, so what I've been doing is digging these guys up. And digging this guy up, you can see the soil just really goes away really easily. And it's actually quite dry in here. So literally, this guy didn't make it because of dehydration. You know, I, I want your plants to make it because they're fully hydrated. Same with us. We need to be hydrated, and especially when guarding. I want to encourage you guys to drink some water, especially out if you're out in the hot sun. But nonetheless, this guy did not make it. So, you know, I think that's because the aqua jet is a little bit too deep. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and dig in here and see where it is. Oh my gosh, check this out, man. Once again, this is way below the soil level, like seven inches down. But there's a fairly easy fix. The easy fix is uh, just to dig this out a little bit and I'm gonna basically stick my hand underneath here. Oh, and I wanna mention, real guys wear gloves. <laughs> I'm gonna stick my hand underneath here and just grab a hold of it, you know? Kinda of like I'm holding a bicycle and just pull up. 
as you can see I'm pulling up the whole soil I'm trying to pull this guy up a little bit and as I pull it up I'm gonna basically get dirt behind it and underneath it to basically jack it up and uh, this will basically correct the issue so what I'm thinking happening here is that sometimes the aqua jazz is level sometimes it actually dipped down and then it came back up and in some areas you know the plants were able to access the water and in some areas they weren't so hopefully after doing this fix all my plants are gonna make it from now on all right so I wanted to give you guys another update on how the aqua jet is working for me you know as you guys last saw you know this bed here against the wall the aqua jet was actually a bit lower and in my opinion kind of angled down and since that time I've raised it up I tried to flex it and get the angle right but I think the connector was kind of put in wrong at the wrong angle so it's can't really be fixed easily at this point but I did correct it raise it up and after I raised it up I replanted with a whole bunch of cucumbers and I'm happy to say that they've all made it. A few of the plants out in the front actually didn't make it and that's because you know the angle is going down instead of straight across and then the waters you know as it comes out it just goes lower and I've proven this with a little moisture tester which I'll bring out in a minute and then uh, you know the, the moisture level of the soil up near the top is not sufficient enough for many plants. Some plants are more tolerant than others like the tomatoes you know I mean they grow pretty quick they'll send their roots down to get that water deeper if you install it improperly now the next part of this video is really important to me because you know I, I'm an early adopter man I like new technologies like using it fat using it early figuring out what's cool because you know I like to be at the head of the curve and there was some challenges for sure with the aquajet but what I'd like to do next is actually bring in Rob the owner of the aquajet company who I brought in here to basically you know make sure this uh, system is going to operate in peak condition but more importantly figure out why this occurred so that when you guys get or if you guys get the aqua jet this will not happen to you I mean I'm like the guinea pig for you guys you know I'm not I'm not going to be a canary in the coal mine and lose my life or nothing but I'll be the guinea pig and try stuff out and uh, you know see what happens so that to let you guys know before you buy it before you invest your hard-earned money in something if it works or not and thus far it's worked fairly good you know this bed has been an, a really good success there and the single bed with the single, you know, down the middle, that's, that's been a comedy of errors. Anyways, let's go ahead and bring Rob in, and, uh, and we'll go over each of the issues that you guys saw in this video uh, with you, and, and exactly explain why it happened and how to prevent it in the future. All right, so now we're here with Rob, the owner of Intelligent Irrigation LLC, who installed my AquaJet, and, uh, you know, I could blame him for everything that didn't make it in my garden and you know there's at least probably like two dozen plants that didn't make it luckily I have the Home Depot guarantee on some of them so I'm gonna just get replacements but many of them I didn't actually and uh, you know once again we're gonna figure out what happens that doesn't happen to you guys so Rob what would you say happened in this bed where you know the middles grew great I think I might have lost maybe one plant in the middle for some odd reason mm -hmm. but on the ends I lost literally half of my plants and even after I replanted some of the plants just didn't thrive optimally right. well what which is one of the reasons why we went to the dual aqua jet was to make sure that we got the edges. What we had here was one in the center, meaning that the aqua jet had to come out two feet. So what happens is it's going to take a little time. It's going to come out to about right here, and then the water capillates to the rest. So if you plant on the edge, what you're going to need to do is make sure it's hydrated. But that's why we went to the dual system to make sure we got it all the way to the edge, especially when you're in a climate like this, when you're in the desert and you have the heat beating down either on your wood or your bricks, you'll feel the soil just right in here. And feel this, John? You feel how hot that is? Oh man, that's smoking, man. And then over here, it's cooler. Right, so what happens is the, it picks up the heat. I picked this up on my grape plants last year. You, you're, you're cooking this and the heat radiates in a few inches. So you're gonna need even more, more moisture to cool that down. And that's another reason why we went to the dual aqua jet because with the dual aqua jet, you're right here and you're gonna go all the way to the edge and that dual aqua jet will be kind of cooling this brick off because now it's gonna come all the way out and hit the brick. But the combination of a lot of heat cooking the roots and not enough moisture on the end is really why the plant stretched at the end because when you plant all the way out here on the edge, you really do need the moisture. And once again, that's why we this season went with the dual aqua jet because we noticed last year 
in the or in the first season that when you put it in the middle it's kind of stressing out on the very end right here so we could have either gone with more jets but that would reduce your pressure so what we did is we went with the dual system that we're really happy with john and as you can see on the other bed it really worked out so that's why we recommend the dual system so we can get all the way out on the edge you put a single system in it's going to work good but your first row is going to have to come six inches or so off the bricks to start it to make sure there's moisture there so if you want to take advantage of all four feet and come on the edge we really do recommend or actually we don't recommend we, we tell you you really do need to use the dual system and that way the whole bed all the way out to the end and you get the the extra uh, combination of, more, of cooling the bricks or the wood so you don't cook the roots on the very end all right great yeah I mean I definitely agree luckily when I installed this I put uprights to put in you know the racetrack design which I like so much which has worked in my other beds when installed properly uh, because this is fully grown in, luckily we were able to get in there and Rob was able to get in there and put in the racetrack design. But on this one it's kind of interesting because we actually left the middle one in. So this actually has three aqua jets. I don't know if I recommend that. That's an overkill. Don't need it. But we can't really pull out the middle one right now because all my plant roots are probably wrapped around it. So we got three in for now and we're just going to see how that goes. Rob, let's go to the next bed. Actually that was quite a success. It was the one with my peppers similar to this bed but all the plants made it except for one. So let's go ahead and find out why that one plant didn't make it. So now we're in my other bed, which we have the racetrack design, which is the same size as the one you guys just saw. It's like four foot by eight foot. And this bed's done amazing. I did actually some testing by putting over some uh, plant protectors, greenhouses over one row earlier. And that actually was not a good idea in the summertime, maybe in the winter time or to start your season out earlier. Actually stunted the growth because I'm experimenting here. But all the plants in this bed did great, except for this one in the corner, Rob. So tell me what, what went on here and how it could be corrected in the future. Sure. Well, when I first came over here, I noticed that it was really dry here in the corner. And the first thing that that tells me is that the, uh, one of the jets was either clogged or there just wasn't a jet there. So what I did was I dug down until I found the aqua jet like I'm doing here. And I noticed that there wasn't a jet coming out. So what I did was I got a drill and you could, you know, for, for one hole or something, we really don't recommend it, but you can, you know, put in an extra hole here like I did. What I did is I brought one of the drills with me and put in the hole. So now it's going to get in the corner, as you see, with just one running, we got it moist. But what I want to do is dig out over here because you see with the dual aqua jet, even though it was really dry, we've only ran it like twice. And all the way over here in the corner, you can see that mm. the soil is already moistening up. So now it's good to plant here. So what happened here was it was just a lack of water because we didn't have a jet on the very end, an emitter, basically a hole drilled in to cover this area. So the first area that was getting watered was this plant right here. On the other side of the aqua jet, there was one. That's why uh, everything's growing good over here. But for some reason, we didn't get a hole in the aqua jet over here. So what you had was one big square of dry soil. All right, Rob. So. You know, one of the things I recommended when Rob was installing it was to basically make sure the jets are centered in the bed. You know, like if we're doing the run, we could have a hole like at the far extreme end of the bed. And then by the time we get to this side, you know, the last jet ends at like 12 inches from the wall. And then this whole area will not get done instead of having, you know, like uh, like a six inch spacing on that side and 12 inches on this side. You should make it like eight and eight so that the, you don't have to go as far. So. Would that be an easy way to ensure that it could be corrected without having people to drill? Because they shouldn't necessarily have right. to drill these holes, right? Right. You really don't want to drill the hole because, first of all, you're going to drill the hole. The system's already uh, sealed off. You might get some uh, of the shrapnel, the PVC from drilling inside that may clog a hole. So you really want to stay away from that. The, the way to do it is just like John said, or if you want to get a special order, you can call us by phone and say, look, why don't you make one extra hole at the end and we could do that and mark it for you also on a special order basis. I see. Sure. And then, uh, so the question is, Rob, if they do decide to drill their own hole and, you know, put that in their hands, because that could mess up how the whole system is work and designed, you know, what size hole should they drill? Okay, what, what you want to do is get the smallest drill possible. And therefore, you're going to go to a hardware store, your Home Depot. You don't want anything bigger than 1 64th, which is usually the smallest that you're going to find. You know, we drill with a special drill. And so it's a lot smaller. Our holes are, are, are very small, but for one hole, you can get away with it. And the reason you don't want all the holes at is because you're going to lose pressure. The bigger holes, remember, we've done all of our R&D, you know, based on the size of holes and, and the spread on them. So, but you can do it for one hole. But what we recommend really is to try and get a hole. What you can do is after the, the last hole emitter here is you can cut it and get a coupler and put one little extra piece and place that hole anywhere you want by cutting that piece mm. shorter. 
You see, and that way you can make sure that you've got That's a good hole. Good idea. Because what happens is at the very end, when you put an end cap on it and you put an adapter on it, you're coming off the wall about that far. So you're about that far over, and then another six inches before you get to your first jet which is gonna put your first jet over here. So you wanna get something that's gonna angle in the corner. The best way to do it is have us do it for you, where we can do it at no extra charge, but you gotta call on the phone and ask us to do it for you. Otherwise, you would just mix up the pieces. But we can specially mark a piece for you. We can put one extra hole at the end. We can angle it for you, but it's something that would have to be over the phone because a lot of people have, have different installation types, so it wouldn't work for everybody. But that's some things that we could do for you. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I mean, with, with this uh, installed with a new hole, I'm confident this bed is gonna be rocking through the summer and that's one of the things I like about the aquajet you know like when I had the drip system like on the other side of the yard you know I got to put a hole in the drip emitter and then we got this all this tubing runs on the top and this system just looks so clean and for me personally I expect I'm going to be able to plant out to the extreme exact edge if I want to to cram in the most amount of plants to grow the most amount of food and the aquajet if properly installed and set up will allow you to do that all right, Rob, let's go to another section, actually the biggest section that had the, the biggest mess up of the, my whole yard and sure. figure out what happened for you guys out there. All right, so now we're at the uh, bed that I have against the wall. And this bed, I thought it was going to work really good if anything is going to work because, man, the AquaJet only has to push out like <laughs> a foot, man. And I figured it should be able to do that. And this is going to be the bed that's going to work the best. Unfortunately, this is the bed that actually worked the worst. I probably lost over two dozen plants alone in this bed easily, probably more than that, actually. I'm about to pull out and replace. And you guys saw earlier when actually I figured out that the AquaJet was planted deeper and actually deeper than it should have. So Rob, why don't you go ahead and tell us what exactly is going on this bed and, and why it occurred. Sure. Okay, this is one thing that you want to be careful with when you install the AquaJet before you install your soil. Because when what happened was when we put the AquaJet in, the soil was still a little low down to here. And we had it on top of the soil, which would be the right level. And then when the other soil is put in, because it's a long system, you got a 20 foot system here. And so the system is going to tend to bow. So right in the middle section from about 10 feet on and 10 feet this way, the system sunk like a half C in the section. So when you put the dirt on it, it's going to push down. So what you want to do, if you're going to do that, is get some standoffs. But if you put it in before you put your soil, after you put your soil in, you already, you're still going to have to double check to make sure that that doesn't get pushed down, which John was able to do after he brought it up. And so we had two issues going on here, John, which was we noticed that in the very beginning, it was growing good. In the very end, it was growing really good, which led us to determine that it may be something in the center. And then when you identified it, that it was seven inches. And this is worth saying, seven inches is just way, way too low. And it was actually a little more than seven inches because you had seven inches, then you had one of the jets kind of on the downstream. So by the time it got out here, it was probably at the nine inch level. And so you, what you did is you brought it up which is to the four inch level, which is why the plants are still growing or they're able to replant and grow good, but you still had the issue with the jet coming down. So what you have here is, is the aqua jet at a four inch level, and then with a the little downturn, by the time you get out to the end here, it's probably watering at, at a six inch level. But what we had determined now that the roots are already established. After we checked it out yesterday, the roots are down into the moisture zone. So we're not gonna do anything with this this year. We're gonna wait till the plants are out and then what we have to do is go down there where the adapter is on because where you install the adapter is going to determine how the spray goes. Okay, and that leads us to our, our next thing. We want to show you how to set it up properly because where you and how you put the adapter on is going to determine the level of spray. So what happened in this system is this is the adapter that goes in the very beginning and what happened was this adapter got cocked a little bit like that so now the spray is going to go down. So what you have to do is get this straight up and down at top dead center. So now what I want to do is show you how to get the system straight. In other words, to show you how you get your spray that's parallel and not tilted one side or another. And it starts with this because this is the adapter that adapts to your PVC. And this is going to determine how your spray is sprayed, how you put this on. So what you want to do is make sure that you have the very center of it on the top and the very center on the bottom straight up and down in your coupler. And there's a way that you could do that. And the way to do that is mark the centers. You can get a Sharpie or a pen and you mark the center line here and mark a center line here. Then you come up here and you mark the line right down the center. And then on the coupler, the PVC coupler, they usually have a seam that centers them and you can mark that same seam. So what you would have is something like this. You have the seam on your PVC, that's the center of it. And now you have your AquaJet adapter where you see where I marked the center here and the center here and these line up straight. And then I just tilted it and drew a straight line up the middle. So now when you glue it in, 
you're going to sit there and you're going to glue it in like that and you're gonna, it's twisting and turning as you glue but now all you have to do is line up the two lines and you're going to be straight and parallel and your spray is going to be nice and even otherwise it's guesswork and it's really hard when you're looking down at the aquajet because you got a, a a 45 degree angle down this way another angle down that way so it always seems like you're twisted one way or another if you're trying to look at it from the side so the way to really do it is to mark your center points and then you can't go wrong so as you guys learned actually the problem in this bed happened to pretty much installation error because it was buried too much and maybe the pipe wasn't optimally centered so when you guys install make sure you do it right the next uh, challenge I want to show you guys is uh, how to ensure you get the proper level since I was a guinea pig you know, we figured out that the pipe might get buried too much if you're doing a brand new install. This is not going to happen if you're, you know, putting it in an existing system where you've already had good compaction. So we're going to share with you guys now, you know, how we're going to rectify this situation in my two new beds that actually have not yet filled. So now we're looking at my new raised bed that hopefully the soil will come in today. We're going to get some good high quality potting soil to put in here. And uh, the problem was, you know, in the other bed, the, the aqua jet got sunk down too much. So to ensure that does not happen, I recommended that Rob comes up with uh, specially designed standoffs so that you could get them actually upright and also at the right level, which he's gonna do soon, but until that time, he's came up with this design. So we got the racetrack design aqua jet here, and then we got the goal posts. <laughs> Can you tell we're in the sports? Well, I'm not in the sports, maybe he is. I am. <laughs> but we got the goal post design here to support the aqua jet at different points to make sure that we got a level run at the right height so the water does not go too deep. So Rob, tell us what we've done, you've done here. What I did is I, I got some three quarter PVC and some T's and what we did is take the three quarter PVC and we anchored it into the soil and then we cut it to the height that we needed and then we got the T and we put the T on like a goal post and we put that on there where they have a crossbar that comes across and then we put a, a stick across the level of the bricks right here where we can measure down to make sure we're at two to, I'm sorry, three to four inches to the bottom of the aqua jet. Now, if you got it at three inches, that's actually a perfect height, but if it's four, it's okay. But right around the three or four inch level is a good level. You don't want to go any deeper. And remember, the reason is because you have the good compost, the good soil that's loose soil. And that's one of the reasons that it grows so good because it's loose, it's aerated. And what happens is the water will fall faster through there. So that being the case, which is why you have to bring the aqua jet up a little, hard, a little higher so the, the water can come all the way to the edge before it falls down. All right, great. I mean, I think this is going to work great. Hopefully the soil comes a little bit later today and I'm going to be able to pile this in without having to worry if this is going to get buried too much. The last thing I want to say is when you do put the uh, goalpost in there to support the aqua jet, make sure you don't do it at a point where there's one of the jets coming out and then that'll kind of mess up, uh, you know, that jet and that whole area of getting uh, water. That, that's a very good point because remember, if you block a jet, there's 24 inches of gap uh, of non-watering. So it's very, very essential that you check to make sure that that jet isn't impeded in any way, shape, or form. All right, Rob. So let's go to another area. One of the big challenges I've had <laughs> with the aqua jet system, I mean, I love it that I could plant anywhere, but the problem is, man, it makes these damn gopher holes all in my beds that just I keep filling and they keep coming back, but I don't got no gophers. I got the power of the aqua jet spraying high pressure water to irrigate my crops, which is working great, but we got all these holes. So why don't, we share, uh, why don't you share next how we can uh, fix that? All right, so what we got here is my gopher hole challenge here. And you guys can see over in this area, basically the aqua jet's right here. You can see the white pipe here. And we got two holes on either side and just in this whole bed, it's riddled with all these big holes. So uh, Rob, tell us how this can uh, be, uh, you know, uh, fixed. So they don't keep coming back. Cause you know, I filled these things so many times that it keeps blowing out you know, all the, all the fill that I put in there and I have these constant issues with the holes. Right. Well, you know, we, what it is, it, it's right by a jet. And when the jets come out, they're hitting right here at the end. When they hit at the end, the water will kind of come up and splash up. If you've ever got your water hose and sprayed it at a window, you'll see that the water hits it. And when it hits it, there's a wave that comes up, which is what's happening right here. As the water comes out, it will, it will hit the resistance and then a wave comes up and it will cause a pocket more so when it's under a lot of pressure. So there's two things you could do. One is you can leave it if it's not impending a plant and it doesn't bother you because it's extra aeration. And the other is you fill it in is you just got to mash in the cavity before you do anything. So what you want to do is compact it in a little because it's going to cut a hole again. So after you, you mash in the cavity that it was in, then you just get a little topsoil to level that off. 
and that will probably happen two or three times or right around the third time itself because what happens is when you compact it here then you're forcing it to work out more there which means it's going to force the stream to come out more and and stop that path of of least direction because it, when it hits that and it starts to come up it's a, a path of least resistance and that's why it's going to come up and cause a hole so the best way to do is to just concave the hole around and kind of compact it in like so and then you get some topsoil and fill in the hole after you compact it in now like I say this may happen one or two more times but it eventually goes away if you work it like that I used to do this the first couple of seasons last year I just left the hole go and and it just seems like where there was around the hole, I had some really good growth. And I don't know if it's because of aeration or, or what have you. So cosmetically, it looks better if you cover it up. But it, it's really up to you. It doesn't hurt anything if you have it there. But most people would like to cover it up. So this is what you do. Just push down, compact in. And after this, cover it up with your topsoil. Do the same thing. And then you might have to do it one or two more times. And then it should start going away. All right. Sounds good, Rob. Let's take a look at another area where I had some challenges with the AquaJet. All right, so now we're stuck back in one of the corners of my yard, and this is where I had uh, some other issues with the AquaJet system. So, Rob, what did you determine happened back in this corner? Like, what happened was the plants didn't make it. One of my plants, one of my plants was under extreme stress and actually barely survived. But now, as you guys can see, it's grown up, doing really well. This is a seedling variety tomato that actually I grew and sprouted in my greenhouse in the winter. Then I, I planted in the ground, so it's going to be some new variety of Growing your greens tomatoes. Well, what we think happened there was the system was just a little low in the very corner because as we come up the property, it changed levels just a little bit and we didn't have a standoff on it. So we think what happened was that in the very corner, it kind of did a, a corner thing where it just pushed down a little, where it's just a little low, which means that the plant stretched out in, in the very beginning until it could get the roots down to where the moisture was. So once again, the, the level of the AquaJet is critically important in a raised bed garden because of loose soil. If this was a sandy loam in your front yard or clay, that really went to matter. Matter of fact, you'd probably put it a little deeper, but because we're in the compost, you, it, the, the height of the AquaJet is extremely critical because of how fast the water falls. So what happened there in the corner is we think it just got a little deep and the reason is because it's moist and everything but the plant stressed out in the beginning because it needed to get the roots down to where the moisture level was once it hit the moisture level it just kept going it was able to survive and then come back to life but it was just about getting to the moisture level and it was just a little low in the corner there all right sure so well what height do you recommend people if they're you know building a bed and bring in potting soil or compost like i did what like what level should the jet be at you know, you want it at the three or four inch level. We, we normally say the four inch level, but to be honest with you, it, when you put your soil in, if you just barely covered up the AquaJet, you're at a really good height, but don't go any, any lower than four inches. Four inches are higher, actually. So four inches should be the extreme deepest that you go. And one of the ways that you do that is if you already have the soil in the bed, you wanna, you wanna dig out a four inch trench and then lay the AquaJet in there and then run the AquaJet because if you got new compost, it's gonna compact down a little, and that means you're gonna lower the aqua jet. So you wanna run it and recheck the height. Right, yeah, I mean, definitely. And also, you, could, you guys could use that standoff thing that we just showed you guys, the goal post, to uh, keep it the right height. Let's go ahead and go over to another area where the aqua jet didn't fare so well and show you guys what happened. All right, so this is the uh, end of the run here, and I had like uh, all these tomatillo plants that I was hoping to grow this year to see how they do in the desert heat, and I planted six of them. And as you guys can see, I have only one left and actually had to get replacements. So I put in some uh, garden huckleberries, also known as the wonderberries, uh, which I replaced them with. And in addition, uh, a few of the tomatoes, I think, in, in the front here uh, didn't make it. So, uh, Rob, what do you think happened in this little area here? Well, when, when we brought the AquaJet in over here, we have the tree here. So we ended the AquaJet about right here, which means your first jet is probably right around here. So what, in, in that case, it takes a lot longer for the water to wick up to the corner over here. And that's why the first plants had died. But when you put the other ones in, the soil was more or less broke in more with more moisture in it. So it just took, a long, it just took longer to get it moisturized away from the AquaJet, which is, it does it in, in uh, a wicking, kind of like a wicking pattern when, when the water spreads. So if we, the ideal situation was the, the AquaJet needed to be all the way out to against the tree right here to make sure that we'd moisturize this area but when it's root bound in that what we did is we just came up to right here which took probably about what john three or four weeks to make sure that all this was moist up here yeah all right so yeah another thing that i want to say went on is actually we're on a slope here so this is the end of the property the property kind of goes up 
So if the aqua jet was installed, you know, cockeyed once again, it may not reach the full ends. And then um, the other thing that I want to say is that when I planted the original tomatillos, you know, that was in a small baby six pack. You know, these were little babies. They were this, you know, the roots were that much. They weren't that established. So, you know, they weren't ready to grow out and seek out the water or get to the water, especially compounded by the water was not wicked all the way to where it needed to be. When I got these wonderberries, and a few of them look like they maybe could use a little bit more water, but they're looking great otherwise. You know, these guys were in four inch pots that the water was already capillated to where it needed to be, plus the roots were a lot deeper, so there's a higher level of success. So that's another tip I want to give you guys when you do plant out after you have the AquaJet system. Run it for a little bit to make sure you get water everywhere and then plant, you know, larger plants instead of the small ones for a greater level of success. Okay, and, and I think that's a good point. We want to remind everybody that after you install your AquaJet, it, to break into bed, you need to hydrate it in two ways. Run the AquaJet, but get a hose and, and over the top, wet your soil up really good. It, it helps break it in. So when you first run it, you want to hydrate it with the over the top watering with your hose and your AquaJet, and then from then on, use the AquaJet. All right, sounds good. So now I got to share with you guys one of my successes. Although I've had some challenges with the AquaJet in this bed, actually, it's worked beautifully. And uh, this is the bed that actually has mostly the chiliplant.com plants that many of you guys may have seen the episode on. If you haven't, be sure to check it out. Chiliplants.com is an excellent place you get over 500 different varieties of peppers and I have probably over 50 varieties here in this bed alone and I'm going to be eating the world's hottest pepper in small amounts and a lot of different sweet peppers that are thriving now because of the soil and also the aqua jet. So when I planted this bed out all I did was basically figured out where I wanted the plants, I planted them and then I top watered for the first few days because you know the first few days the plants basically being transplanted it can't have transplant shock you want to give it a little bit of extra water especially in the top growth and then let it start seeking out the roots. So, uh, Rob, would you have any uh, other suggestions for people, um, you know, when transplanting and, and putting in a new bed fresh? No, but, but that's a good point because we recommend that if you're going to transplant or grow from seed, we do recommend that for the first couple of days that you water on top because, once again, remember the aqua jet is under the soil and you want to water top to come down to get that to root in and take in and give it as less stress as possible when you are replanting it. So, Top watering for the first three or four days is really good. If you plant from seed, then we'd recommend that you do some top watering for the first week, maybe two, until they sprout, just to be sure. We planted seeds and we use it without top watering, but in the heat like this, once again, your soil on the top is gonna dry up really quick. So we, it really helps when you get the top watering on there to cut down from the stress from the transplants or when you just plant. Yep, so, and, oh, I wanna show you guys this too. I mean, you see this guy right here? This is a tomato, actually, it's quite stout tomato. And I didn't plant it here. In addition, I have some other um, purs lane coming up and some mustard greens that I didn't plant, that I didn't maybe, you know, top water in, but because the aqua jet's underneath the soil, the water capillates even up a little bit to germinate my seeds. I've also tested this in another bed where actually I just put, you know, cucumber seeds in between my tomatoes, just press the seed in, and though it was enough water to germinate. Now, this may not happen in all instances, but I mean, this is the power of the AquaJet. Yes, the water does capillate up if you get it at the right height. I guess the last thing I want to mention in this video is that, you know, I have this little soil tester. It's actually called the Rapid Test. So this was instrumental in determining some of the challenges I've had with the moisture level. You could get a simple moisture level reader, you know, like for like five bucks. It has like the gas gauge thing, you know, you can see the moisture level. This is digital. I like this a lot because I could stick this in and where my plants were doing great, this was reading like 9, 9.9, .9, which is the highest it goes to where it's like, okay, I got full moisture. And then some of the areas where the plants weren't doing good, it was like uh, 6, uh, 7 and below. And it'd be interesting because I could put this in a little bit and I'll get one reading and then I'll go deeper. I'm like, oh, at that depth, we got a 9, but you know, at, at a taller depth, it just wasn't reaching. This was especially important where the uh, Ago jet was cockeyed and pointing down, and this is how we determine that. Uh, Rob, any final comments that you want to say about the uh, aqua jet in this video today? Yeah, I think that the last thing that, that I want to touch on, what we haven't touched on yet, is, is the aeration that we've been getting because when we ran the system here, when we got here, we could hear a lot of air, and we know that at the end of the long run down there at the long bed, it's getting most of the air. We got the dual aqua jet getting a lot of air, and we know that a lot of success of, of the growth because we, should, we know that you've seen the, the difference in the way that tomatoes grow with the aqua jet as opposed to the drip system. And remember, a lot of that is the aeration because your drip system and your aqua jet are watering and, and you want to get watering efficiency.
But one thing that the AquaJet does and nothing else does, which promotes the growth, is the aeration. And with the dual jets in there, you're getting more coverage of air. And this is the type of growth and the health that you get with the aeration of the AquaJet. Yeah, I mean, so far the AquaJet's worked really great for me. And the final shot I want to give you guys is actually a part of the AquaJet system that's critically important and that actually has not worked optimally for me. And I'm going to try to share with you guys how that could be uh, better corrected. And then we're going to go ahead and close out this video because hopefully my system's all up to snuff and I'm going to have a amazing growth uh, this season. So the last part of the AquaJet system that's critical for your success is not even the system itself, but it's your little control timer and the valve setup. So, you know, I recommend the Hunter PGP valve. So these guys are actually disassemblable and you could actually uh, buy the parts for them if your diaphragm goes out or whatever. A lot of the cheap rain drip and other brands orbits, you know, you basically got to chuck them and get a new one. So I like, I like the Hunters a lot. And besides just the valves operating properly, what controls the valves is even more critical as I've learned with the AquaJet system. Unfortunately, uh, most sprinkler controls are designed for just that. They're designed for sprinklers and you could run sprinklers a minute or two minutes and it's not going to really matter either way. One of the things I've learned is that the AquaJet is really precision and fine tuned, right? I mean, right now I'm saving a lot of water by only running the AquaJet system two times a day for a minute each. And even then, I still get some extra runoff coming out of the bottom, which means I'm watering too much. So instead, what I'd like to do is water two times or three times, like 45 seconds a day, before, and I could cut off the water before it starts coming out the bottom, so that I'm wasting water. But unfortunately, this water timer and most other water timers on the market at this time, you're not able to control down by the second or 15 second intervals. You know, I thought about this a lot more too, you know, so I'm going to be on the search for a new water timer. I'll have a video when I get one and install it so that you guys could, you know, use the AquaJets to its most efficiency. And check this out, right? Once I get the new water timer, I want to be able to control it by the second. And in the middle of the day, I could turn on my AquaJet for like, say, 10 seconds just to, number one, push the air through, but number two, shoot out a jet of water to cool down my bricks. And I might do this once an hour to keep my bricks cool and keep the soil temperature low. This is something that's very critical in the desert for growing in the heat. You need to keep that root zone cool and moist, keep it with enough water, you know, but if I'm watering a minute several times a day, I'm going to be having too much runoff water. So you guys just saw some of the challenges I've had with the AquaJet and how they got resolved. I personally believe that if you install the AquaJet in your garden and you do the things that I recommend and that I figured out, you know, I believe you're going to have success. Now, another big thing was, and I included this at the end of that video, was getting a proper irrigation control timer. It's quite unfortunate that all the irrigation control timers out there that I found, for the most part, basically only control down to the minute. And with the AquaJet, we want to be able to control down to the second or minimum 15 second intervals. Early in the season when my plants were young, I found that even if I watered, you know, a minute or so, it might overwater. So I really want to be able to dial that down to like 45 seconds to get like the ideal amount of water flow. Of course, another thing that I didn't mention in this video is that the irrigation control is very important and you're going to have to babysit your irrigation control over the summertime, especially if you live somewhere where it's hot like Las Vegas. When my plants were young and baby, you know, it, I, I didn't have it water too much. As they grew and as they grow bigger, right, the plants' re water requirements go up. Like, you know, if you're a baby, you don't need to drink as much water as if you're a 300 pound grown man, right? They say drink half of your weight in ounces a day which is probably a really good rule to go by. I don't know exactly what that is for the plant. I can't say, yeah, half of your weight in ounces is what this plant, I don't know. But in any case, as the plant gets larger, it will need more water and especially, it'll need more water, especially in the hot desert environment like Las Vegas. So actually I, I have um, all my beds now on a four cycles per day, which is I maxed out my timer controller. Uh, to water at different intervals so i think i water like probably like uh, 6 a.m before the heat comes out and then i last i let that you know sit and go uh, for a little while then it usually gets hot around i don't know 10 11 12 so then i want to hit hit it underground again with water so we're not evaporating it off again maybe i'll water i think around 11 or 12 right when it starts to get get hot so now my plants have a blast of cool water in their root zone so now they can pull the cool water up through their cell structure and respirate or basically evaporate off 
all the uh, the cool water through their leaves and that's how they cool themselves down that's one of the hugest secrets that I've learned about gardening in Las Vegas is is doing this technique and then of course the peak of the day between like noon and three hottest time of the day so I let that elapse for a couple hours then I blast my aqua John again uh, you know about 3 3 30 and give it some more water so that once again the plant could respirate some more or transpire actually <laughs> and uh, pull more water up through its uh, plant and then um, evaporate off so it could keep it cool and then I let that go until it gets cooler in the night and then I water again I think maybe about six by then I feel the soil is getting drier and it needs a good shot of water and then that shot of water later in the evening then lasts all night until the morning when we repeat the cycle now in my opinion it's watering by timer is very inefficient and actually I think it sucks <laughs> and I'll say that you know I need to find a solution where there's a, literally a moisture meter in the soil and uh, you know when the soil is down to a certain specific requirement or dryness then I blast it with water and then it only waters when the plants really need water when the soil is the dryness that I desire so I haven't found a really good one yet that works on you know the standard valve lawn controllers they all have these stupid timer things and key into the weather and all this kind of stuff and uh, so yeah that kind of sucks and the other thing that I want to definitely say is it's important to be able to you know program your cycles many times per day the tomato lady Leslie Doyle who I learned about you know watering several times a day especially in the hot desert climates waters up to nine times a day in the middle of the season peak season when our tomato plants are huge and they're putting out poundage of tomatoes I only water four times I would like to water actually a few less times and then shorter bursts you know because my irrigation control only goes down to one minute I'm not able to water in 30 second or 45 second intervals which I might like a little bit more but I would have to play with it so I want to encourage you guys to get a water control that you can program as many times per day as possible and hopefully even control by the second another thing that I want to do with the aquajet that I have not been able to do yet because of the irrigation control is maybe just water or turn on the irrigation control for like 15 seconds or even 10 seconds because it's the first 10 seconds or 15 seconds as the aquajet comes on it basically clears out the lines and blasts air into the root zone so by running it for only 15 seconds you could basically blast air into the root zone and hopefully increase your growth so yeah I would optimally do a cycle of like you know air into the root zone water air into the root zone water air into the root zone water and alternate the times and you know I think with this technique I think I could even get better production than I did this year so I'm looking forward to next summer season when, I, when I'll be able to do this and uh, I'm hoping for like 10 foot tall peppers by the end of the season and maybe I'll even get there this season some of mine are already six feet and I had to invest in a whole bunch of extra six foot tall extra heavy duty stakes because man these peppers are just falling over I'm like flooded and being rained on with peppers here thanks to the aquajet and the good soil mixture that I'm using as well as of course uh, I can't forget to thank nature the Sun and um, also of course all the beautiful plants that I'm growing this summer season all right so if you want to learn more about the aquajet system be sure to visit the website intelligent irrigation LLC and if you call Rob maybe he'll hook you up with a special GYG discount if you mention hey I saw you on GYG uh, he had made uh, the original discount only for a limited time but hopefully if you call him he'll, he'll do something special for you because I want my viewers to be able to get this system at an affordable price actually the lowest price that it's available because after testing it I do believe it works and I can recommend it for many installations now the other thing of course take heed to the other recommendations that were made in this video like with the standoffs very critical so that it does not sink hopefully he's coming out with a solution for that and of course uh, be sure to use that racetrack design don't use the single my one bed that's stunted is the one behind me and the peppers aren't quite as tall and that's because we had a single down the middle and then we had to dig it up and then put uh, a double so we actually have a triple in here that I need to cap off the middle row but yeah put the racetrack design I think you'll be great and make sure your water pressure is sufficient for the aqua jet system I guess that's the end of this video I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode with the update of the AquaJet. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and in this episode, what we're going to do is something very important, and you know, it's one of the most important things you could do in your life.